Since the character of Batman was initially created in comic book form during the late 1930s, he's been portrayed by a variety of different actors. These actors include Adam West, Michael Keaton, George Clooney, and Ben Affleck, as well as several others, both before and after. Each of these stars had a reason for saying goodbye to the franchise. Join Factsverse as we explore why each Batman actor left the franchise for good. The character of Batman debuted in the DC comic book Detective Comics in 1939, and the first actor to portray the character on screen was Lewis Wilson in the 1943 serial simply known as Batman. The character had become an instant sensation with comic book audiences, and it took advantage of the comic series' popularity. Lewis had been born in 1920, and his parents were also thespians. However, Lewis left acting after the Batman serial was done filming, as he didn't feel the money he was making from the work was sufficient to provide for his family. He subsequently went to go work for General Foods, and another actor took his place on screen for Batman's next serial. After Lewis Wilson, the next actor to portray the character of Batman was Robert Lowry. Robert had previously appeared in several films before taking on the part of Batman, including two John Ford films in 1939. These were Young Mr. Lincoln and Drums Along the Mohawk, and Lewis went on to find even more success working in horror features throughout the 40s, before finally taking on the role of Batman in 1949. Some of his horror features included The House of Horror and Queen of the Amazons. Robert's time playing Batman came when he was cast in the 1949 serial Batman and Robin. This was a follow-up to 1943's Batman, but Lewis Wilson was no longer available for the role. Robert was well received as the character, though the serial was the first and only time he played him. The character wasn't brought back to the screen until nearly two decades later, at which point Robert was near death. Robert's last film was The Ballad of Josie, in which he appeared alongside Doris Day. The film was released in 1967, just a year after the 1960s Batman series premiered. The creative team wanted to go in a lighter direction with the 1966 Batman TV series, aiming for a style more reminiscent of Andy Warhol than of the original comics. They found their Batman in Adam West, a relatively unknown TV actor. Though the aforementioned Batman actors never became household names, Adam West remains one of the most popular and iconic actors to portray the character, even after his recent death in 2017. Alongside Adam West, Burt Ward played the character of Robin. The show was immensely popular during its first few years, but it was canceled after its third season due to the slightly diminished ratings not justifying the show's large production budget. Adam was grateful for the role that had made him a star, but also sometimes regretted playing Batman due to the fact he felt he was typecast in similar roles for several years after the show's cancellation. Despite the fact that Adam West had a few negative feelings about the effect that playing Batman had on his career, he later came to embrace his time as the character more wholeheartedly. He referenced the role of Batman in a voice capacity during an episode of The Simpsons, and also reunited with Burt Ward for 2003's Return to the Batcave. But his most memorable role in the years leading up to his death was his recurring voice acting gig as Mayor Adam West on Family Guy. Although the 1966 Batman series was a hit at the time, it left somewhat of a stain on the franchise. The campiness of the series communicated to adults and teens that Batman was a character for children. This greatly impacted interest in the character as well as the overall profitability of his brand. Comic book artist Frank Miller reinvented the character in the 1980s with a darker atmosphere. It was this darker atmosphere that went on to define the series into the new millennium. And it's also become the direct inspiration for 1989's Batman, directed by Tim Burton and starring Michael Keaton. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. Michael Keaton was already a star when he got his role in 1989's Batman, but mainly in comedies. He had previously appeared in films like Mr. Mom, Johnny Dangerously, and Beetlejuice. It was on Beetlejuice that he developed a working relationship with director Tim Burton, and this is why Tim thought of Michael when it came time for him to cast the character of Batman. Comic book fans were appalled when Michael Keaton was announced as the actor who was to portray Batman in his first ever big screen blockbuster. Infamously, there were even petitions calling for the actor to be replaced. But Michael's performance ended up impressing both comic book fans and film critics alike, with many still believing him to be the best to ever have portrayed the character. Legendary actor Jack Nicholson portrayed Batman's nemesis the Joker, and Keaton held his own against him. The studio was taking a risk on director Tim Burton with the movie, and it paid off. Subsequently, they gave the director free reign to make the sequel, which became Batman Returns in 1992. 
he turned in a much darker and stranger film. Critics were confused and audiences were terrified. Many parents were outraged at the adult content and intense violence of the film, especially given the fact that it was aimed at children and advertised via children's meals at fast food chains. Michael had returned to reprise the role of Batman and maintained a great deal of respect for Tim Burton. Batman Returns has since gone down in history as a cult classic and one of Tim Burton's most unique and personal films. However, the studio was not happy with the impact the film had on audiences. Though they wanted to keep Michael Keaton as Batman, they also wanted to find a new director. But Michael didn't want to continue without Tim at the helm, and subsequently handed in his resignation after Tim's firing from the second sequel. The second sequel was Batman Forever, which starred Val Kilmer. The film was met with a mixed reception, and Val hated working on it, to the point where he never returned to play the character again. Val's issue was that people were more preoccupied with the character than with his performance. The man the studio hired to lighten up the tone of the franchise was Joel Schumacher. Joel went on to direct both Batman Forever and its follow-up feature, Batman and Robin. While Batman Forever was met with mixed reviews, Batman and Robin was met with flat-out negative ones. Joel had certainly lightened up the tone, but that didn't help the fact that the films were now worse. When Kilmer refused to return for Batman and Robin, George Clooney took his place. Clooney was nowhere near the star he is now and has since come to regret taking the role. He was reportedly given $1 million to play Batman, while Arnold Schwarzenegger, who portrayed the film's villain, received $25 million. And George claims that he and Arnold were never in the same room together, despite the two seemingly fighting on the screen together throughout the film's climax. Batman and Robin marked the end of Batman for a time, before the series was rebooted in 2005 with a grittier and more realistic atmosphere. The reboot was Batman Begins and it starred Christian Bale. Christian went on to portray the character for three films, all of which were directed by acclaimed filmmaker Christopher Nolan. The trilogy was well received, though both Christian and Christopher agreed to call it quits after the third. Ben Affleck replaced Christian Bale for the 2016 feature Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Ben Affleck went on to portray the character two more times, once in Suicide Squad and once in Justice League. Although Affleck's performance was fairly well received, the films weren't. Ben took great honor in being given the chance to play the character and was devastated when critics and audiences poorly received the films. This stress caused Ben to begin drinking excessively and he ended up turning down the chance to direct and star in his own follow-up Batman feature due to the fear he might drink himself to death. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below which Batman actor is your favorite. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.